Chris Christie is the 2024 Republican presidential candidate, and he joins us now on set. Uh, Governor, thanks so much for making some time with us. Um, you know, this looks like a classic RICO case. Why is the Department of Justice having such a hard time getting ahead of this? And it's been left to a, a political arm as far as the Republicans to do this. Well, look, you know, Lawrence, I did this for seven years. I was the U.S. attorney in New Jersey, running the fifth largest office in the country for seven years during the Bush administration. There is no way that getting two misdemeanor tax pleas and dismissing a gun charge should take five years. Mm -hmm. They were obviously, there were people trying to investigate other stuff that we've heard about from Hunter's laptop to these WhatsApp messages and lots of other things in terms of Burisma and his interaction with foreign uh, entities. Look, we've got to prosecute cases like this. Mm -hmm. We have to allow the investigators to investigate. When you listen to the, the whistleblower speaking to Brett Baer, look, that looks like lots of other agents that I got to work with from the FBI and the IRS and, and other agencies who... They just want to do their job. Mm -hmm. They don't care where it leads. They just want it to get to a conclusion. Mm -hmm. And I think what's going on here is Hunter Biden was undercharged. This deal doesn't look right. Um, we're not hearing about all these other facts that are coming In out. The Wall Street Journal governor, Elaine O'Connor, who used to be the tax attorney in the department, just says that the judge should reject this deal. Do you think that should happen? Look, I think that the judge should say, everybody go back to your corners and see what we're doing here. Um, because, look, Mr. Weiss, the U.S. attorney, um, who, who was appointed by Donald Trump, mm -hmm. you would think that he was given the authority to be able to do whatever he wants. But now we're also hearing that he was stopped from going after things in both California and in Washington, D.C. So Congress has to do oversight on this. There may have to be a special counsel, Lawrence, to look at this, because right now you got the attorney general saying, he had, Weiss had all the authority, and you got the whistleblower saying that Weiss told them that he didn't have the authority to go in California. You've been doing this a long time. You a long used time. to be a U.S. attorney. You were a governor, one of the leading contenders for, for perhaps to be an attorney general one day. This guy was almost on the Supreme Court. Do you believe Merrick Garland here after we're hearing from what these whistleblowers and looking at the deal that was presented out for us to see? Do you believe the attorney general that he didn't get involved? Well, like Mama Jones said, someone's lying. Mm -hmm. It's either Merrick Garland or it's Mr. Weiss, the U.S. attorney in Delaware. But they can't both be telling the truth. Merrick Garland, I saw him on TV the other night saying he had authority to do whatever he wanted. The whistleblowers are saying Weiss told them he didn't have the authority to do whatever he wanted regarding Hunter Biden. Well, someone's lying. And what we need to do is get to the bottom of it. And this is why, Lawrence, you know, I'm running for president have this experience as a prosecutor, you, we need to have an attorney general who is no nonsense, mm -hmm. who's going to investigate and prosecute without fear, favor, or partisanship. Because the American people need to believe in the Department of Justice. And right now with this stuff, they're not believing in it. I'm going to get to your run in just a second, Governor. I want to turn to this, Governor, because I... Joe Biden is calling this new term Bidenomics. He claims <laughs> that it's a plan that's going to restore the American dream. This is the president. Bidenomics is working. Bidenomics is about building an economy from the middle out and the bottom up. Bidenomics is about the future. Bidenomics is just another way of saying, restore the American dream. I didn't come up with the name. I really didn't. I now claim it, but... So, Governor, half of the country said they're worse off under Joe Biden. Um, is this going to get any type of traction from the American people? No, because let me tell you what Bidenomics really is that the American people know. Bidenomics is record inflation the highest inflation since the 1970s. Mm -hmm. Bidenomics is, you know, having people lose their jobs, have to pay, do multiple jobs to make up for the money they're losing based on inflation, high gas prices, high home heating prices, high electricity prices. This is what Bidenomics is. And the American people know it because they're the ones having to pay out of their pockets mm -hmm. to be able to put up with this. Joe Biden spent us blind as president all kinds of money out there for the government they was just printing, and it's caused inflation to go up and the economy to go down, and the American people feel it every day. Uh, Governor, I want to talk about your race. Uh, you decided to get into the uh, latest Fox uh, polling has uh, uh, Donald Trump up plus 34, um, the Santa's 22, and you're at 1% in this latest Fox News polling. Uh, you supported the former president twice. You even helped him with his debate prep. 
Some of your critics have said that you're the guy that's going to be the assassin, the one that's going to take him out on the debate stage. So my question is, are you running for president to be the guy, or are you the guy to take out Donald Trump? I'm the guy running for president to be the guy. But as you just said, he's first place in the polls. So if you want to win, you got to beat the man, Lawrence. And look, um, you're right. I was the president of the, chair, of the chairman of the president's transition. I helped prep him for both sets of debates. I was the chairman of his opioid and drug abuse commission. I did everything I could to try to make him a better president. But my view is he's let us down. Didn't build the wall. Mexico didn't pay for it. Didn't repeal and replace Obamacare like he said he would. Said he was going to balance the budget. He didn't. And you mentioned debates. Look, we should have debates. And everyone should be at the debates. And folks should go to chriscrisy.com, donate, and make sure I'm on the stage. But Donald Trump should be on that stage, too. If you want the Republican nomination, the Republican voters have the right to see us right in those cameras. Mm -hmm. And have us compare. And then let them choose. Um, and, and American people are good at that. And we did, But they need all the information. And that's what we want to give them. So, Governor, I guess my big question is, how are you going to break through? I said the 1%. Uh, on the national polls that we just released. In New Hampshire, you're at about 6%. How do you get, because you got to win the primary first. It, if Donald Trump doesn't show up to the debate, if some of the other candidates don't show up to the debate, how do you take them on then? How do you get, get that traction? You got to go chase them and find them, Lawrence. Hmm. You got to go where they are. And look, there are other polls in New Hampshire that show me at 9 and 10%. So the polls are all over the place. But I want to remind the viewers of something. Eight years ago, right now, Donald Trump was at 4%. Back in 2007, Barack Obama was losing to Hillary Clinton by 38 points the end of June of 2007. We've been in this campaign for three weeks. We're making a mark. We're making a difference. And we're going to keep working at it. And that's what the American people deserve is to have candidates who are willing to come on your program like this and be asked whatever questions you want to ask and answer them directly. And don't skate away from it. I know what I want to do for this country. I want to do big things again for America. That's what we need to do. Governor, I've been watching you on different programs. You've been kind enough to come on this program tonight. You have laid out why you think that not only Donald Trump is unfit, but why Joe Biden is unfit. Unfortunately, we, we are reach, reaching binary choices. And, you know, there's a Republican and a Democrat in the race. The RNC has a loyalty pledge. You don't make much of that loyalty pledge. But if Donald Trump is the nom nominee, would you support him? Look, Lawrence, I'm going to sign the loyalty pledge, as I've said. Um, but I'm going to treat it with as much seriousness as Donald Trump treated it in 2016. He signed it. All of us were on stage together. We got asked in a Fox News debate, will you stand by the loyalty pledge? There were 10 of us up there. Nine of us raised our hand and said, yes, Donald Trump's the only one who didn't. You know, the fact is loyalty has to go both ways, Lawrence. But take the pledge out of it. Well, but, Biden, me, Trump. Well, look. Who, who do you end up voting for? I don't for? think that's the choice America wants, Lawrence. I don't think it's the choice America wants. Between the two of them, they're 160 years old. You know, Lawrence, there comes a time when there's a sell-by date and everybody's got Father Time is undefeated. But, Governor, you know. we know the reality right now. They're the two leading candidates right and, now. And, by the way, Lawrence, the reality eight years so ago... So what would you do? The reality eight years ago was that it was going to be um, Jeb Bush um, running against Hillary Clinton. Mm -hmm. um, that didn't turn out to be the case. So let's not get into I just that. Know, what, the what reason I, why I asked you this, Governor... I wouldn't vote I know, for Joe Biden. I know you to that be way. a straight shooter. I am. And I don't want to vote for either one of them, Lawrence. Let me answer it flat out. You're not going to vote for either one of them. I don't want to vote for either one of them. But will because you Because neither vote for one of them are qualified, in my mind, to be president of the United States. We see Joe Biden out there. He, he doesn't look like he's even competent. And the bottom line is, how are we going to nominate someone who is under two sets of criminal charges now and still under investigation for two more? You know, we want to win this race. We're tired of losing. Under Donald Trump, Lawrence, we lost the House in 18. We lost the Senate and the White House in 20. But, Governor, and we lost since, these other things even, in 22. Ever since the indictment, Donald Trump has gone up in the polls. So how do you make that case to Republican voters when they essentially just double down in, in their support? They haven't so doubled, the, but, but, Lawrence, with all due respect, they haven't doubled down on anything. No one's voted yet. Mm -hmm. and, and the fact is, if polls... You don't put much stock into the polling. Well, what, what I put... It, that's what it is today. You know, you know what they ask you, how they ask those questions? You've been called by pollsters. Mm -hmm. They say, if the election were held today... Well, if the election were held today, I'd be shocked. Because the first election is not going to be in January in Iowa. January of 2024. We're six, seven months away from that now. So let's run a campaign. I, I don't think we crown kings mm -hmm. in America. You got to work for it. And Donald Trump needs to work for this if nomination. If he becomes so the nominee, 
do y'all become friends again? Does he offer you a cabinet post again? Do y'all clean this up if he becomes the nominee? I don't think so. I think you know, some, of the, some of the stuff he's called me um, over the last few months, um, I don't think that's going to happen. And, and I, that's sad. But it is the truth of the matter, and it's his doing. But you're not closing the door to voting for him. I'm, no, I, I'm saying I can't support him. I you can't. Su- you won't vote for I him. I can't support either one of them. Okay. Not Biden or Trump because they're not competent and qualified to be president for different reasons. Joe Biden predominantly because of his age and what we've seen on TV. And Donald Trump, because I don't believe he can win, Lawrence. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're under this much criminal scrutiny and the conduct, by the way, that he's engaged in, taking those documents, keeping them in his home, making sure that his own lawyers didn't get to see all of them, not telling the truth to the Justice Department when they wanted those documents back, and now saying that what he was saying on a tape when he was waving around a document, well, I was lying then. Well, I think Mama Jones, and I know my mom, would say the same thing. You're lying once, I'm not going to believe the other time, too. We need to have someone who's honest, direct, and who can beat the Democrats because I'm tired of losing. Chris Christie, thanks for taking the questions from us. You got it, Lawrence. So Joe Biden's gaffes are becoming so common, even the president himself is trying to normalize them. The media aren't covering up for him anymore either. They're openly admitting he's old. More on that next. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.